The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below. Hello Rovers fans and welcome back to another match preview as Rovers are back on the road away to the table toppers, the destroyers of Ewood Parkers. It is Fulham away this Saturday and Dan and I are back for a match preview. Dan, it has felt like ages since you and I have been doing one of these. So are you all right? What have you been doing with yourself? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, it does feel like it is, doesn't it, when it's only actually with the Sheffield United game now. I think so. But, Could have been that one, but it feels like too long. So I hope you're good. Yeah, I am. It's been a busy week or two with everything that we've announced and coming up and that. So kept myself busy and now I'm just looking forward to another and away day. Absolutely. And uh, you are one of the troopers away at Fulham at 12.30. 5am starts for a lot of people from Lancashire. So uh, you get my absolute respect. And Dan mentioned announcements, so yeah, let's do a big announcement. An evening with Colin Hendry. How does that sound to everyone? It sounds good to me. I will be there, as Dan will be, Friday the 24th of June. We've got Colin there in person. £15 for tickets, including a pie supper, and you can get your questions in for Colin as well on the night. So doors at 6, start at 7. It'll be brilliant at the Avenue Hotel, just at the Brockall Village. So if you've not seen that on the Rovers Chat Twitter account, Go and check it out and you can get your tickets through Eventbrite. And it's all raising money for Tony Parks and the Sporting Memories Foundation, which is a cause so dear to our hearts. You know, Tony, absolute Mr. Blackburn himself. We want to keep raising as much money as we possibly can for that fantastic charity. So, yeah, we will be there and looking forward to that with Colin. And if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, then why the hell not? Because we do brilliant stuff like an evening with Colin Hendry. Uh, so hit that subscribe button now and please give this video a like for us if you possibly can. So, Dan, let's get into the match preview then. Um, we will reflect on the last result first, as we always do, before starting to look towards Fulham. And there he is, Mr. Reda Kadra. Massive, massive win. Um, pure relief on Saturday. We got the job done against QPR. Actually, in truth, really dominant performance. It should not have been as nervy as it was. It should not have been as nervy as that panned out in the second half, you know, 15 minutes to go and we get the winner. But another clean sheet, beating another playoff rival, still in the top six. And we've got some good fixtures on paper, touch wood, to look forward to in March and April. So how important for you was that win on Saturday? Massive, absolutely massive. I think I said it in January that if we get through February and this first game in March and we're still around the playoff picture, I think we're in a very good position because, you know, all these teams start playing each other now. I'm sure nearly every week now there's one of the top eight, well, two of the top eight are playing each other. And, you know, that's massive incentive for us when, like you say, three home games in a row coming up and then a trip to Reading. I think realistically... I think we're all hoping for double figures in terms of points for the four after these. So, you know, that this win were massive. It was just getting three points when we're going to go to Fulham and we all know what everyone will be talking about all week up to the game and we'll discuss it soon and mm. everyone will discuss it on the day and we're probably not going to win, are we? But uh, just massive to get three points on the board when we needed it. It's such a vital time as well, you know, against the team around us who are probably the third best team in the league for me anyway on the day so uh just massive and you could see the relief at full time couldn't you for everyone oh, i was a massive relief and do you know what i remember doing a match preview it might have been like the beginning of january maybe it was like the whole game maybe it was the one before that maybe it was huddersfield even and i remember looking at the three fixtures QPR at home, Forest at home and Middlesbrough at home. And we identified those three as really important fixtures. And actually, buried in the fact that we've not won many or scored many in January and February, we've beaten Middlesbrough and we've beaten QPR, albeit we lost to Forest. But actually, like, if you take, take me now to me back then, I probably would have taken six points against these two. So I just think particularly coming off the back of the Sheffield United result and the way that that panned out and the way that it happened, 
massively important win. And and Dan, you've got Reda Kadra on there. You know, personally, for him, like what a rough week he's had because he missed the penalty away at Sheffield United. Then he missed two big chances in the first half against QPR. And really, he should be sat there and he's won Rovers six points in a week, but he's only just scraped us three points. But how pleased are you for Reda Kadra? You know, this is a man of 20 years old. Let's not forget that. These are human beings at the end of the day. 20 years old, on loan, in a place that he doesn't know, in a country that he's not born in, playing for a side that are lumping on all the pressure from the stands. How pleased were you for Reda Kadra to bang that free kick in after the week he's had? Yeah, I think you wouldn't have wanted it to happen to anyone else, would you, after Wednesday's game? And he misses them chances at the start and you wonder, does his head drop? And he goes and puts that free kick in. And for me, I think it's a sign of how good this team is and how much they fight. And, uh, you know, all the qualities we spoke about all season. I think they're so evident in this result here that I put it on Twitter after the Sheffield United game that it felt like the season were going to swing again on that point and the way we reacted. And for that man to come back three days later and to score the way he did and everything about it, you can't love this team anymore, can you? And he's one of, well, every player in this squad, but he's one of success stories this season that make me the happiest just the way he's responded after you know not the best of starts and like you say coming right up north as well from where they were based before and everything out of your comfort zone I'm delighted mm. with him and if we go up this year I hope Rovers break the bank for the two Brighton Warnies I really do yeah. And you you are right to single out the whole squad, actually, because I tweeted out after the game as well. I'm so proud of the players after the result on Saturday because that was a sickener away at Sheffield United. But I tell you what, what a performance on Saturday. Dominant. We deserve to win. QPR fans and Mark Warburton all admitted that we deserve to win. It was just a brilliant, gutsy performance from Rovers. And Clean sheet wise, another one. 14. It's the joint most in the division. It's absolutely sensational from Rovers. So, really, hats off to the Rovers on Saturday. So proud. It was a brilliant result. And the next game, it doesn't get any easy, <laughs> does it, Dan? In this January and February run, we top off all of them with top of the table away. Fulham, uh, they score goals for fun. And obviously, the added spice of Rovers' record home defeat. There he is, Jan Paul Van Hecker, committing assault on Harry Wilson on the night. Um, how much do you think the players will be wanting to put that right on Saturday, Dan? Uh, you've, that, I think that's all you'd have to say to them as manager, wouldn't it? I think I think back to that day now and, you know, my, fav, my only game I've ever had in the press box. and <laughs> Oh, yeah, that is. Yeah, sat there watching it, watching each goal go in and I had the Fulham commentators to my right and me and, and they're going, oh, it's 3-0, 4-0, asking me if it's record defeat. And I remember sitting there that day wondering if it were the end of Mowbray and, you know, probably I was worried a bit that it were end of the season already that we'd be playing out all these dead rubber games. But that should be the only motivation for me. I think you go to these and... I think they've got to look as well at teams picking up points at Fulham recently. I don't think they're as invincible as we thought they once was in terms of games. You know, Huddersfield went and did a job on them. I think Blackpool got a point there, didn't they? Mm. You know, you look at this and we all know who favourites will be. And like, like we just said then, that 7-0 will be in the back of everyone's mind. But maybe it's the chance to go and prove them wrong, you know. This team's done things we haven't expected and... It wouldn't surprise me if we went on 1-1-0 on Saturday and, you know, we go and nick it or we get a point because that's what this team's all about. So, avenging that 7-0, especially Van Eck, I think he'll be, uh, he'll be up for it more than most, I think. And you're right. I don't think the players are going to need any motivation. And I remember the space that we did on the Rovers chat site after the 7-0. You know, there were calls for Mowbray's head. You know, players, people were saying, who's this guy on loan from Brighton? And where are we going to be this season? And everything was unravelling at that very point. But we've spoken about it on other previews. You know, what a response from Rovers. And actually... There's a strange quirk with this game as well, Dan, for me, because that Fulham 7-0 result then set us on a path to getting in the top six with that winning run that we had, and we've been there ever since. After this Fulham game, 
We've then got those final 11 games, which could become a run in itself to take us into the playoffs. But we've got this game first, so let's not get too ahead of ourselves. I personally don't like any talk of free hits or doesn't matter what happens on Saturday because I remember people talking that way before we went to Bournemouth and you and I, I think you predicted a win and I predicted a draw, but I think we both thought, no, we ain't going there to to have a free hit and let Bournemouth just beat us. And this is how I'm seeing the game on Saturday, particularly with that added motivation of the 7-0 and avenging that and another point towards the objective or another win towards the object objective. So, we should go there with confidence, shouldn't, uh, shouldn't we? And the QPR game has absolutely given us that again. Yeah, this is it. And, you know, going there with no expectations on us again. And Fulham should beat Rovers Saturday. And I think that's how everyone will see it. And mm. that helps us a lot. You know, I think if we were watching QPR go there, we'd be like, oh, we can get points on QPR this week because Fulham are going to go and beat them. And everyone will be looking towards them. And that helps us. It helps us over side so much. I think that, you know, we've gone to places and not expected anything and we go and do it. And this Rovers side are underestimated by a lot of people. And I just think that it's the point to go and prove. If a win this week, I think everyone would wake up, wouldn't they, and realise this is actually a team up there. Not as a shock as much as it has been. It is a shock, but not... To the extent that everyone's making out, you know, just a win. What a win I do for this time, this team, and what everyone would see of Rovers after this have been massive. And obviously, our blueprint to victory will be to keep it tight at the back. You know, we've spoken about the clean sheets and we've spoken about the attacking options that we don't seem to have at the moment. So, if we can keep it tight, maybe we've got a chance. And I'm just looking at the games that Fulham have lost at home this season, they've lost 2 1 at home to Reading. They've lost 2-1 at home to Huddersfield a couple of weeks ago. But there's one that's really standing out to me. Uh, 20th of December, Fulham nil, Sheffield United 1. You know, I can see a result like that. That's the blueprint for the Rovers victory. If we score two, then brilliant. But 1-0 Rovers, you can see it. That's a blueprint. Keep it tight. Nick the victory. And then we move on. But in the interest of balance, <laughs> you know, I'm not sat here absolutely mad on a Wednesday night as we're we are recording this, Dan. They're the top goal scorers in the league. <laughs> Mitrovic has got, what, 30-plus goals. This ain't going to be easy, but Huddersfield have shown the way, but let's just give Fulham a service. This, we are going to be under the cosh on Saturday, aren't we? This is going to be sustained attacks. This is going to be players that can hurt us. We are going to have to stand up and be counted on Saturday, aren't we? Yeah, that's it. Like you say, Mitrovic probably having the best season a strike. Well, he is having the best season a strike has had since we got relegated from the Prem. You know, they've all this talent. The fact that Tom Kearney doesn't get in every week speaks volumes for me. Harrison Reed tossing. We know all about the plays, don't we? And mm. they're a class above and they win this league, without a doubt, even with bonus games in hand. For me, they go and win this league and they walk it. Yeah. Regardless of the results. So you know, we're not discrediting them when we say Rovers can go and make something and we're not saying that we're a better side by any means. We know exactly what they have and we know that being realistic, they're going to be playing in the Prem next year, aren't they? So, you know, it, it is a, one of the best championship sides, personally, I've seen since I started watching. And let's just give some perspective on Fulham's figures. It's just an absolute nonsense. 82 goals for... That is 31 more than Bournemouth, who have got 51 and in second place. And Rovers with 46 goals, which is the joint fourth best. They're nearly double our total. So the goals are just absolutely ridiculous. You've got Mitrovic on 34, Harry Wilson on eight, Cabano on eight, Fabio Carvalho on seven, who looks an absolute talent, that guy. Dekadova Reed five, Rodrigo Muniz five, who two of them came at Ewood Park. So... They've got goals all over the park. So this is going to be tough. So Dan, you know, the million dollar question, how do Rovers approach it? Because I'm looking at this 12 games to go, if you include this Fulham result, and we're saying it's not a free hit. For me personally, I think six wins and two draws should be enough to get the playoffs. That would take us to 77 points. So can you see any change in approach from Tony Mowbray? Or do you think he might be just thinking, nick a draw? That's one of the draws out of the six wins and two draws that we need. How do you think he'll approach it? Uh, I think he'll go into it a bit like the Sheffield United one. You know, we were quite defensive at the start against Sheffield United. 
because we can't concede early. We know that from the reverse game. So mm. I think we'll just go for the fact of don't concede by half time. And then, you know, we might just need one chance. A ball might drop to Kadri and he goes and finishes and we win the game. You don't know, do you? It's, for me, if we go all out, it'll end up costing us a lot. So I think he'll sit back, try and just soak up the pressure like we do well off the ball this year and... If it takes nicking it, nicking a goal from Kadri and getting a point or something, I just think it'll be frustrating for the fans, but it's best for the team and that's what matters, that we just don't go out and get battered. Well, we'll battle hard into the first 10 minutes of Sheffield United now, aren't we? So if it's going to be like that, my word, I've not bobbed myself <laughs> so much for this whole season. Just sat watching the first 10 minutes at Bramall Lane. My word, that was the OK Corral, wasn't it? But we came back well. So, yeah, I think you're right, Dan. I think we're going to have to ride a bit of a storm in the early game. And let's hope we can just keep it tight and then grow into the game like we did at Bramall Lane. So um, we'll see. So selection issues then, Dan. Let's come on to the side. Um, Ryan Niambi, uh, big injury for him on Saturday. That happened right in front of me, actually. I saw the saw him go over under the challenge. It was a fair tackle. He's obviously just gone over in, in a bad way. It looks like he's going to be out for six, eight, ten weeks um, with medial le uh, knee ligament damage. Um, bit of a blow for us, this one, isn't it, Dan? Because I don't think Zay Falk has had a perfect injury record. Joe Rankin-Costello hasn't looked too comfortable coming back from injury. So um, we've got to rely on Zay Falk, haven't we? Just staying fit for the rest of the season now. Well, so that could just disrupt us a little bit, couldn't it? Yeah, it is one. It's I fear that we've seen the last of I'm there personally in a Rovers shirt, yeah. or at least for a long spell anyway, because by the time he's back, we're probably looking at end of April, aren't we? Uh, I think today's news, the contract news, well, today when we're recording about James Brown's an interesting one, and I wonder if he's going to get his chance now. You know, with mm. this contract, I think that signals the end of Nyambe personally, and you know, does Brown challenge C. Fountnell for game time? It'd be a big ask of him given his history and only coming into club recently. But, you know, if Sir Falk's not up to scratch, maybe Brown gets his goal. But I do think we'll see C. Falk this game and injuries just keeping clean massive. Now, I won't be surprised to see him sub quite a bit. You know, we've gone to the back four a bit this year, haven't we, where we'll bring. Lenny Ann on into right back, or we'll yeah. bring Ayala on, sorry, and put Lenny Ann right back. So, yeah, I think Mowbray will be very cautious with him. And, you know, if we're two up in a game, I think that's the end of Southampton's game and we protect him, don't we? So, yeah, fitness is key for me now. And hopefully he does it. I like the look of him. I know he's had a bit of criticism, but I like the look of him and I think he's he'll be a good replacement for Nyambe. I really like him. And I think I only judge players really, particularly ones that have signed in January, once they've had a pre-season with us and then you see them in the season. And I do like the look of Zay Fout, but I hope I'm wrong. I just can't see Zay Fout playing every 90 minutes to the end of the season now. So I think you're absolutely right about Ryan Niambi. And I think you're right about James Brown as well. And if it is true about Ryan Niambi, you know, it's such a shame how it's panned out. I hope it's not the way because... Yeah, you know, you can talk about being sentimental as a football fan, but Ryan Niambi does deserve, you know, a round of applause or whatever from the Rovers fans because he's been brilliant. And whilst all of this stuff has been going on with his contract, his performance levels have not dipped. And it's a shame if it does end this way that he's going off Ewood Park on a stretcher and that's the last we see of him. So um, I hope that that's not the case. Maybe there's a little avenue back in with the injury. I don't know, but it looks unlikely. I think you're right, Dan. That James Brown thing just absolutely signals the end, really, doesn't it? Which is a real shame. The other man who's obviously injured is Ben Brereton Diaz. You know, we won't labour on that one, but he is going to be out until at least after the international break. So, um, you know, that is a big one for Rovers. You know, when you're talking Mitrovic with 34 goals, you know, Ben Brereton Diaz is just as important to Rovers with 20. But one man who is back should be Joe Rothwell. Big surprise. Um, well, it wasn't a surprise. He went off against Sheffield United, but big surprise on the team sheet that he wasn't there on Saturday, but he should be back. Um, actually, Dan, I thought, you know, Bradley Johnson came in and did a good job, but Joe Rothwell, if we are going to beat Fulham, you need your best players. Joe Rothwell's one of them, isn't he? Yeah, massive, and he is massive to this club, isn't he? And 
again with the contracts, I think he's still performing. So yeah, just having him back in, like you say, Johnson did have a good game, but you're not going to leave Rafael on the bench, are you, if he's fit? So I think it'd be a welcomed addition, and you need game changes in these kinds of games against the better teams, and hopefully Rafael can come and put one in, and we're going on happy. That's it. And if you do just get one chance in the game, you know, I think of a game like Cardiff away, for example, where you might just get that one chance. Joe Rothwell obviously took it. So, you know, hopefully a bit of magic for Joe Rothwell if he's back. But we should mention a couple of things. <laughs> Lewis Travis and John Buckley are walking the tightrope with nine yellow cards. So I think it's after the Bristol City game that the records get wiped. Um, if they are to get a booking in the next three games, they are going to be suspended for two. So I think, Dan... I can't see Mowbray not playing Lewis Travis. He absolutely adores Lewis Travis. And I think Holloway taught us that we need Lewis Travis in our midfield. That, for me, is a bit of a risk. <laughs> I really hope he avoids a booking, but I can just see it coming. For the same reason, I could see John Buckley not playing for three games, actually, particularly if Joe Rothwell's back and particularly with how well Bradley Johnson did. So do you think that would be harsh on John Buckley if that's the case? It's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, when you're looking at what have we got? We've got Millwall, Bristol City, Derby. Yeah. Is it that way? So Yeah. Yeah, it is a tough one, isn't it? It's would we miss him against Derby and Reading? I think's the you know, the way to think about it. And I think it's a way more probably will think about it that Yeah. I think he def I think that was part of the reason he didn't play the other day, that he needed him at Fulham. For yeah. definite Travis and Buckley. It's just whether he decides to sacrifice one for two games. It's a tough one, isn't it? It really is. And we saw that Johnson can do it, but could Johnson replace Travis? I don't think so. No. Nah. We've got a Buckley replacement, haven't we? So I won't be surprised if you see if he takes Buckley out and then you've got Dalton. You know, Dalton plays when Buckley's suspended and Dak should be back by then, so it's a dilemma, isn't it? And it's not one we need, but it's one we've got to put up with. I think he'll, I think he'll just sub him off a bit earlier and hope yeah. that he does it. Because we've seen it, haven't we? That if Buckley's limited and he can't make a challenge, that's where his game goes and where he struggles a bit. So it's a real tough one. I'm glad I'm not the manager. We decided. <laughs> really glad I'm not. Just on Lewis Travis, for me, I think he's actually back to the form that we know and love with yeah. Lewis Travis. When he first broke in, he was all action. He was getting forward. He was going back. And, you know, maybe we did see him in the the opposition box a bit more. I actually now think he's found his position on the football pitch, which is in front of that defence, breaking up the play, doing that ugly stuff, that energy, that engine room. And I think he's been brilliant the last few months. So, um, you know, I think he's really important. And I think Mowbray plays him. Uh, under normal circumstances. But Dan, I think you are right to offer the perspective that Mowbray will be thinking right if they do pick up a book in, which games do they miss? I do think you're right that Mowbray will be thinking that way. And do you know what? If John Buckley doesn't play, Dan, one man who will be replacing John Buckley, Ty Dolan. What a game that boy had on Saturday. I mean, brilliant. He... Showed little glimpses of what we've been missing with the substitute performances that he's had in the two games prior to that. It was like, oh, yeah, we have been missing Ty Dolan, but he raised it another level on Saturday. I know that Jan Paul Van Hecker got the Sky Sports man of the match, but for me, Ty Dolan was the man of the match on Saturday. I just thought he led from the front really well. I thought everything good came through him in attack. And actually, as much as, yes, we missed chances and, yes, we kept another clean sheet, I actually thought going forward we were pretty decent and Ty Dolan was the centre of that. You know, he's going to start, isn't he, if John Buckley doesn't? Yeah, and I think he had that man in the match. If he'd have got a goal, he'd have had that man in the match straight yeah. in his pocket, wouldn't he? You were that good. And yeah, it's, you know, I think I were a little critical of him previously. I think he were becoming a bit more of a... Not a skill, like someone who'd not really get the goals and he'd do a lot of work that led to nothing. But I think he's, I was looking at it wrong. And when you look at his influence on the side, just running, I think yeah. the running things a lot of times where it gets underestimated, you know, that his work ethic were unreal on Saturday. I think the way, you know, QPR didn't get a touch of the ball without Dolan being next to them and 
put yeah. the pressure on another day with a score, like you say, with a score of three or four, and they'd have been down to him a lot of it. I think he's that number 10 role is kind of perfect for him, isn't it? Especially if he's playing a little further forward and against the teams that like to, I think, is it Tossin and Tim Ream for Fulham at the moment at centre half? Yeah. You know, they're not massively pacey players and they're not, they're a bit more physical. So I think he suit this game a bit more and I yeah. can't remember if he played in the reverse game. You might well have done. We'll have to have a look at that. We will yeah. confirm that before we finish this little recording. I'm going to do a little sneaky Google, not that I need to be reminded of the fixture. No, but I think it's the vibe in it. <laughs> but you are right, though, you know, just someone putting in that work rate and that energy up top, you know, it does rub off on the rest of the side. And I thought he was brilliant, absolutely brilliant on Saturday. I really enjoyed his performance. And, you know, on and off the pitch, you know, Ty Dolan is just an absolute role model in every way, uh, shape and form. And it's great to have him back in the side, particularly now we've lost Diaz. Um, you know, we just need a bit more energy. We need something else in that attacking third and, and Ty Dolan brings that. Um, Ty Dolan did start the game, Dan, uh, against Fulham at home. It was Dolan, Buckley as a false nine and Brio as, uh, as your front three. So he did. He did start that one. So, Dan, all of this chat about the side and who might play and whatever has led us to our predicted side, which you are going to magically flash up on the screen now. This is what we've gone for. Um, I think some of it is obvious. Some of it might warrant a bit of discussion in the Rovers fan base. Let us know what you think in the comments box, Rovers fans. Uh, Zay Falk obviously coming in at right wing back for Ryan Niambi, who is injured. That one is pretty obvious. Well, we'll say about Harry Pickering. Um, I actually thought Ryan Giles came on and made a really good impact on Saturday, Dan. He had a couple of chances. He's clearly a guy who likes to get forward and, and really quick. So let us know what you think, Rovers fans. Would you be going for Ryan Giles over Harry Pickering? Particularly with how poor our set pieces were on Saturday, actually. Um, some of the corners from Kadra and a couple from Pickering as well were not up to the standards. So Ryan Giles would obviously solve that. We've put Joe Rothwell back into the side. Is that a little bit harsh on Bradley Johnson? Um, let us know what you think, Rovers fans. But Joe Rothwell has to be in this side for me. And I think he operates really well alongside Lewis Travis in a two. And then, as we've mentioned, Ty Dolan in that false nine position behind Kadra and Gallagher, who at the moment, one of the only two fit strikers that we've got in the club. So John Buckley, unfortunately, still on the bench. But it does protect him from those bookings. So let us know what you think in the comments. Have we got that side wrong? Who would you be playing? Would you be changing the formation? Would you be responding to some other stuff? Let us know in that comments box. So, Dan, that just leads us, um, well, to talk about Ryan Hedges. Thank you for the reminder, virtually. How could I forget Ryan Hedges? He did come on on Saturday, didn't he? And I'll confess, I wasn't at Swansea away. I wasn't at that game. And I think that's probably the moment when Rovers fans have seen the most of Ryan Hedges. But he also came on and made an impact on Saturday, didn't he? So can we make a case for Ryan Hedges over Red Kadra or Sam Gallagher? Or has the goal of Kadra and the work rate of Gallagher meant that Hedges is still on the bench? I won't be surprised to see him come in here, Hedges. I think it's a strange one, isn't it? But we've seen this link up playing. I like his... I like the way he uses his body and he gets into players and that. And his time's going to come for this club and it has to come because I don't yeah. think we'd have bought him otherwise straight away. So I can see him getting a goal. Whether it's this game, I'm not sure. But just he's, I like his link up playing. He's a bit of a clever player and he's another one who'll put the weight rate in, which, you know, if Morbe wants to go with something different and try and just somehow score against Fulham and keep the game. I think Hedges will be good to have to sit in. So, you know, it is one to just mention and keep an eye on alongside Giles, really. No, thank you for the reminder on that one because I was meant to mention it. But um, I actually, you know, when we're talking about the Travis and Buckley dynamic, Ryan Hedges is actually someone that might help solve some of that. So say Buckley plays and gets a booking, uh, you know, and then he brings Ryan Hedges to like come in and you've got Hedges, Dolan and, and Gallagher. You know, it might Hedges is someone that might just solve a suspension dilemma. Um, so I think you're right to mention him. So maybe that will lead Tony Mowbray to be starting Buckley or, or whatever. It just helps, you know, just with the overall feel in those attacking senses. So, yeah, sorry, Rovers fans, let us know what you think about the side. And 
and Ryan Hedges as well. You know, um, you know, gutted that I forgot him, but um, you know, he is going to be an important member of the squad, particularly with Ben Brereton Diaz unavailable at the moment. So, Dan, final order of business is the score prediction. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to have to wash my mouth out with my prediction, but um, do you want to go first? Yeah, I'm probably going to get rid of it. I've just, there's something about Rovers that whenever I don't think they'll do something, they go and do it. And <laughs> I don't think this, I've got to say, I think we'll win one now. I'm just going to go for it. And whether that's Wharton, I'm going to go Wharton, you know, I've backed him for the last four weeks and he's come close. So I'll go one nil Wharton, but I'm saying that purely in the hope that this delusion in my head is going to come true for once and <laughs> we go and win it and we're all to, and then the automatic chat starts again, which won't surprise me if we won, but I'll just go one the Rovers. I don't think it will be, but we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? Uh, do you know what? I absolutely respect you for doing it because, you know, this side have, have surprised us, you know, they've made us proud, they've got results, they've dug in and, and all of that type of stuff. And last week I was led by my heart rather than my head. I've got to be led by my head on this one. You know, the goals that they score, the strength that they've got in the side. I think the only way we win this game is if we keep a clean sheet. And I just can't see us keeping a clean sheet, Dan. I, I just can't. Um, as much as I'd love us to dig in and do it, I do think they're going to score. You know, you know, logic dictates that they're going to score. I just can't see us winning the game 2-1. I think the only way we win the game is 1-0. I just can't see us keeping the clean sheet as good as we have been with clean sheets. So that, I'm sorry, is just my honest opinion. And I'm washing my mouth out. I think it's the first time I've predicted us to lose on a match preview. But I've got to be an adult. I've got to be the one that's just using my head, Dan. I've got to. I'm sorry. Do you forgive me? I'll forgive you. We'll see it full time, won't we? I won't forget uh, next time we do a preview if we win. <laughs> For that Millwall game, I'm, I'll bring it up then. But no, nah, I don't actually think we'll win. I think we'll. No, do don't, think, don't let me. No, I do think the best we can hope for is a draw. But like you said, if you're over side, shock us and they've done it countless number of times. And if we go and win, like I said earlier, it won't be the biggest shock in the world for me. So nah. I'll go 1 0 Watson. Gotta believe him. Well, no, stick to your guns. Don't let people like me talk you otherwise. So Dan is saying one nil Wharton. I'm gonna say no, I'm not gonna say a score. Fulham are gonna win. I'm not saying a score. Mitrovic will score a goal. Fulham will win. That is my prediction. Let us know what you think in the comments box, Rovers fans. I'd love us to nick a draw. I'd love us to get a win, as Dan says, but I'm gonna let my head rule my heart on this one. Please prove me wrong, Rovers. If there are any Rovers players watching this, ram that down my throat at full time. I don't care because I'll be bloody buzzing with the results. So let us know what you think. So, yeah, that's it, Dan. You have a safe journey down to Fulham on Saturday. Gutted I can't be there. Uh, it's just not worked out for me, this one. But hey-ho, we'll be back for all of the rest of the games for the rest of the season. If you're there, Rovers fans, go and enjoy the game. Brilliant that we've sold out that fixture. The London contingent obviously there and snapping up those tickets as well as the loyal Rovers faithful that have been there on the road all season as well. So it's brilliant to see that away and sold out. Please give this video a like. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Go and buy your tickets for the Colin Hendry evening that we are doing in June. Dan, I will say goodbye to you, mate. Rovers fans, we will say have a good rest of your evening and we will see you soon. Come on, you blues. The Rovers Chat YouTube channel is proudly sponsored by SixYardsOut.com. They've got retro football from every era with mugs, phone cases and much more. They also have plenty of Rovers goods including apparel with the famous 94-95 season and this season's kit. Check them out using the link in the description below.